Welcome to Monday's Learn with Beauty Slash, and this video will finally solve all your questions about which speed should you choose when you work on brows, eyeliners, hair stroke, and even lips. This is the most useful video, so watch this till the end. Okay, so first of all, I want to mention that in this video, I'm going to use a paper and I'm also going to show you on the sheet the difference between speed and which speed you should pick for a particular part of the brow or eyes or lips or hair stroke technique. Now, to answer the question, uh, what is the speed? Of course, the speed is the speed with which machine hits the skin per second. If the speed is low, we're going to have uh, the dots, uh, the pixels more far away from each other. If the speed is getting higher, we're going to have the pixels so close together. Now, where do we need the pixels more far away and where do we need the pixels more close together? So let me draw the eyebrow. Over here at the lower part, we need this part more saturated with color, more da darker to create dimension. At the front, we need the dots to be more far away. And also at the upper part, we need the color to be lighter, meaning these dots also to be more apart. And then when from the lower part towards the upper part, of course, the color will gradually be lighter. So in this area, the dots are a bit more apart. And sorry to disturb this video, but I have something important to say. If you're struggling with brow mapping, I am sponsoring right now 200 US dollar to enroll in my online brow mapping course. You can check all the reviews about this amazing course, how people transformed into professional makeup artists with no fear of mapping, and so can you. If you dream to be professional at brow mapping, even at most difficult cases of uneven brows, then definitely sign up for the scholarship right now in the description below, as this offer is limited. So based on this, you would logically think that for the outline over here and for the lower part, we need to increase our speed so that the pixels are so close and we get more color. And you would also logically think that for the front, we would have the dots far away, so we need the speed to be as low as possible. However, in reality, if your speed is this high, first of all, you're going to create trauma for the skin. Why? Because machine will hit the skin so many times per second that of course it will traumatize the skin. If the spin is relatively not fast, it will be more gentle to the skin. So with this being said, even if you want to get more saturated color, you shouldn't put the speed too high. Even if you're creating the hair stroke technique, you also shouldn't use the high speed as it will traumatize the skin, the skin will get red and the color won't get inside the skin. Now the second disadvantage of the high speed is when you do your shading, you will notice it's so hard to blend the dots that are so close together. And that's why you girls have this patchy look for the shading, because your speed of machine is too high and it's almost impossible to blend the shading that looks like line. That's why you will have this darker spots versus if your machine is quite slow, what you will get is it's so easy to blend together the transitions from the dots that are more far apart. So with this being said, I do not suggest to use high speed. If you have any questions about this video, just connect with me on Instagram beauty slash. I'm very friendly and responsive for any questions. And also I post useful tips and tricks on my stories and feed. For more in-depth content and courses, as well as products I use, visit my website beautyslash.com. So I'm going to turn my machine with very, very high speed to demonstrate you what I mean. And at the end of the video, I will reveal 
my speed numbers but first I want you to understand what is the reason why I'm selecting that speed number so right now the speed is quite high So if I were to do the shading with this speed, it's going to be more difficult to blend all the pixels together because they are almost forming a line. With this speed, I would have to move my hand wider to get the pixels more far apart. Because like this, I can easily blend without creating any patches. Otherwise, again, we would get these blocky lines and the shading will not look good at all. Now, if I decrease my speed, You can see how far away the dots. I can finally relax. I don't have to move my hand wide. I move my hand as I used to, as is comfortable for me. And you can see that I'm creating really nice transition that do not have any patches in it. So let me show you how the dots should look like so that you can adjust your machine speed and also your hand movement to achieve this distance between dots. I hope you guys can see the distance between dots, but it's pretty much one millimeter. Let me even make it more vivid for you it's basically one millimeter between the dots so in case if your machine speed the lowest speed for your machine is still high then to achieve this look you would have to move your hand wider in this way the dots will be more far away from each other but if you get used to move your hand quite in a short range of course of course the dots will be close to each other and then we will have the same problem so a good hint to you is try to get used to or try to practice to adjust your hand speed your hand movement to more wider movement this will save you so many trouble with your shading so if you are the person who always creates patchy shading it means maybe your hand movement maybe it's not the speed which is the problem but your hand movement is always have this short range instead of having a wide range of movement so again short wide then the second problem if in case your hand range movement is correct like this but then your speed is still too high you will still end up having the dots too close together and also you will traumatize the skin now let's move to another section how do we create outline how do we create the, the darker spots for the eyebrow and how do we create the light front so first of all i'm going to tell you from the start i will still use the same speed because with this speed i'm not traumatizing the skin and i can still achieve more darker outline more darker tails and more lighter front the only difference between those two will be in my hand movement. So first I'm going to demonstrate how do I do more shaded parts such as tail. Ah. 
I am achieving darker teal with more close together uh, steps and I'm also doing more times over the tail area. You can actually get pretty dark with this. Then how do I do outline if I want to have more saturated outline? I literally just slow down my hand. So instead of this, I'm now just slowing down my hand. And the dots are so close together that they're forming this dark line. Now, if I want to create very light front, of course, with the speed, to achieve the light front, I just need the dots to be far away. That's why my hand movement will be just wider. Instead of shorter move as I did at the tail of the eyebrow. So this is the tail, sh shorter move. And for the front is wider move. Next, I'm going to show you how I do the hair stroke. So for hair stroke technique, we definitely want to have the stroke being saturated with color. So how to achieve if your speed is low? You need to really slow down your speed and you need to do it more times. And there's a lot of movements for machine hair strokes. Some will result for you in more thicker stroke. Some will result in more thinner stroke. So you have to find a way that you feel more comfortable in achieving the most crisp stroke. But I just showed you a different ways for machine hair stroke technique with the same low speed. Now, lastly, I want to say, even though for this machine I have used very high speed, it still actually looks nice because this is a good machine. But if I were to take a very cheap machine and use even the lowest speed for the cheaper machine, I would have completely different look. I would have really a patchy look. So I will demonstrate this maybe in this video, maybe in my next video. I'll see how many minutes this video left. And I would also would want to reply to you. So what is the number for uh, this speed? So right now I'm using on the critical device is 5.1 voltage. So this is the normal speed. If you're going above closer to six, this would be considered a high speed. So my range would be from 4.9 to 5.1. And you would also ask for eyeliner or lips, and I would answer it's the same. So this is the distance between the dots that I want to keep throughout any procedure that I do.